Hello there, beautiful being. Now we've all come across very wounded people in our lives. Often these people will kind of leave a trail of destruction behind them. You might have had a relationship with someone like that. You might have friendships with them. You might work with them. They might be in your family. But these kind of people can often leave you feeling a little crazy. They do, they're very good at gaslighting. Now, we have all have inner wounding. Um, I did a video the other day about um, going through that heartbreak of just being born into this world of contrast, polarity, separation, and fear, and how that created a core wound. And when we learn to face that wound and heal that wound, we create that common passion or compassion for others so that we actually all realize that we have all had the same experience, that initial core wound. And we can all go more towards light and more towards love and truth because we've had that experience of dark and fear and separation. And so I believe there is a good reason why we go through that experience when we're born into this world. But ultimately, we do want to work on ourselves. And this is something I've done in my own life over time. A big part of that was because of my NLP training, learning to rewire my brain, learning to look at all of the programs that were in there and in the subconscious and learning how to shed light on those programs and change those programs consciously. Now, this is a, it, another way of talking about shadow work. So shadow work is going into the dark, going into the, the unfelt feelings that you've repressed for a very long time and finding the core root, shedding light on that just by observing, and then that light transforms that core wound and, um, and permanently creates a healing in you in that particular area. Now, as we progress in our journey in healing ourselves, we start to see more clearly those who haven't done some of the work. And so it's like a freight train coming towards you. You begin to recognize some of the old traits that you had uh, before you were healed or transformed or seeking solutions and answers. And so this video is more as a protection um, advice for those who have very wounded people in their lives who project that onto you, even though you know that that part of you is healed, there is, if you react still, there is a, a remnant of healing that still needs to be made. We are mirrors in this world and the experience that we have in the outside world is a direct reflection of our inside world. So if you have a very peaceful life, generally you've probably created a lot of healing in yourself and that's being reflected in your environment and in the relationships in your life. But if you do attract and create a lot of drama, then you can be sure that there's unhealed wounds within you. And that's being reflected to show you what healing you still need to do within yourself. So how do we protect ourselves on the journey from other people who are wounded and leave a trail of destruction? This is a really important question. Now, I talk a lot about surrendering. And surrendering is exiting the matrix, exiting the simulation, taking off the headset and realizing who you really are at any point in time, that we are not this body, not this mind. We're having a human experience, but we are pure loving awareness. We are what love is. And this illusion of fear and separation is the simulation. So all of these wounds are within this experience of the simulation. They are all parts of the illusion, but we still experience them when we're human. So it is a good idea, I believe, to work on yourself as best you can so that it's easier for you to step out of the matrix whenever you need to. It's, there's no resistance. There's no programming that's stopping you from seeing that option in your life. And so while we're in this human avatar, it is handy to have resources such as boundaries work. And this is something I learned in NLP and I give credit to Rob Whitewood. He was my mentor and trainer, rest in peace. Um, and he taught, a, he created an amazing method called neuro relationship therapy. Now I do a lot of um, boundary meditations for a lot of my clients. This is a big one. And I think this is one that because we're in this human avatar, it's a very handy resource to have. We're basically building neurological protection against those who are still really wounded, who are projecting their wounds onto you. And you've done the healing work and you're aware of that, but you are also protecting yourself from being triggered or um, hurt or cause suffering in your life because you don't have boundaries up. 
sorry, the first boundary that we can create in our lives is that one of knowing that we have the ability to at any time to step out of the simulation. Just that knowledge alone gives you a beautiful sense of feeling protected because really there is nothing that can hurt you. It is all an illusion, this life experience, but it certainly feels painful. So by creating our first boundary wall, we can create a sanctuary, if you like, while we're consciously in this body. So what I do for most of my clients, I won't run through the entire boundaries meditation, but I will explain that I build bubbles. And so a lot of people do this, healers use these kind of um, uh, visualizations. Visualizations are extremely powerful. The science of imagery, um, imagery creates our reality. And so it draws into our world what we see before words. Words in, invoke images, but really we don't work with words in this reality. We work with images. So I get you to build a bubble around you and fill that with love, light, and air. And this is your inner sanctuary. This is where no one can ever penetrate you. No um, mental, emotional, or physical kind of attempt can touch you. Um, yes, you will be hurt physically, sorry, but um, it really doesn't affect you the same way when you can't be hurt mentally or emotionally. And so this is what we do in NLP is we teach you how to build these neurological boundaries that are tiger proof, bitch proof, bulletproof, bomb proof, bite proof. And um, we create such a strong boundary system with our mind because the mind doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what is real in the external world. And so this is why NLP work is highly, highly effective, very powerful because we are working with the mind. And so one of the first things we can do when we are around wounded people is remember that boundary wall around us. And what we end up doing, and I won't go exactly into all the details, is we build more boundary bubbles on the outside of each of those uh, walls. And we decide the criteria for each boundary wall and who's allowed inside that bubble. And so you might put that wounded person who's hurting you or attempting to hurt you a few layers back from the close bubble to you. So we generally have our spouse and lovers in the first couple bubbles, often it's the same person, and then we'll have closest friends and we will decide the criteria for that. So a lot of people have trouble identifying their friends. Well, if you become really clear with someone maybe that you can fully trust, that you can tell them you love them, or that you can call on in the middle of the night and who's very honest with you in every aspect and transparent and authentic in their life, then you can probably call them a close friend. And family doesn't come into the equation here. It doesn't matter about being blood related. Yes, that might sound controversial to many, but when we allow family to walk all over us, we are dishonoring ourselves. We need to also decide where they go in our bubble system according to how they treat us and how much respect they have for us and how much they meet the criteria of your closest friend or casual friends or acquaintances. The rest of the world is just strangers at this point. So I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to go right into exactly how I do this meditation, but I do want to make you aware that boundaries are an absolutely integral part, I believe, of living in this body of um, creating a neurological protection, mental protection, emotional protection from um, energies that can seemingly hurt you. Because when we allow that kind of boundaryless existence, then we allow anything in to um, emotionally and mentally hurt us. And that causes pain and suffering. And so obviously we want to reduce as much pain and suffering in our experience while we're humans as possible. Yes, at any time we can step out of the simulation and be with source and feel that oneness and love and, and um, compassion for everybody and everything and see the truth of everything, but we aren't always able to be there. And so we need to be realistic in our journey and see that boundaries are probably a good idea. And so we just need to be aware there are people out there who haven't done a lot of work or even aware that they have to do work. Uh, or in the middle of the journey of work. And so they don't see what you see yet. 
So a lot of people live unconsciously and they hurt people. So um, the other thing is to be aware that a lot of the world right now is in survival mode, fight, flight, freeze, this primordial part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain, the part of the brain that is really not necessary anymore in our human evolution. Um, it might be if you're really in the middle of like a jungle or something and there's a tiger coming, but ultimately we are going to that fight, flight, freeze part of the brain way too much now, just from old programming, deeply ingrained cellular memories. And so part of the journey of healing is realizing that we don't need to go to the fight, flight, freeze part of the brain anymore. Um, certainly not as much as we do. And so that anxiety and fear can't live in our lives so consistently when we don't allow ourselves to go there but people who are deeply wounded are living in survival mode and so yes they're going to be hurting those around them and they, their behavior becomes unnatural um, when we're in survival mode sometimes we can hurt others around us um, because we're just trying to stay alive and so this is why boundaries I believe are very important so Realizing all is one, all is divine, is absolutely the noblest, I believe, goal and intention to strive for in this experience. But in the meantime, creating beautiful boundaries in our lives so that we can be really aware of those we can trust and those who may wound us and put them accordingly in um, our boundary system that we create. I also recommend doing a stock take regularly on your boundaries and where you've built these um, visualizations because our friends can move in and out. They can be demoted and promoted depending on uh, how they've treated you. They might um, betray you so you can move them out to a further boundary wall or they might show, might show that they actually are someone that you're growing closer to that you can love and trust and who are very transparent with you and who don't manipulate you and you can move them closer. And so... Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful technique that I learned from my trainer and teacher, Rob. And I just wanted to pass on some of that just so that you know, because right now in the world, there's a lot more wounded people, as I've mentioned. And I think it's really important to become aware that you need to protect yourself uh, from the energies in the world right now, so that you can have a more peaceful experience. And you can go to that meditation place more often, feeling that you are safe to do so. And this is another reason why we can't live in survival mode all the time. We need to be able to find peace so that we can leave and go to be resourced whenever we need to. So if you resonate with this message, please like, share and subscribe and have a beautiful day. See ya.